So that's fine then, in which case we're, we're ready to begin. And uh, we'll start with the opening government team. And is it Radislav? Radislav? Yeah. yeah. We'll be first. So Radislav is in Shane. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear judge, this uh, government believe that we should prosecute uh, that we should prosecute the case of the cyber violence. We are we are the uh, the we are every day reading in the newspapers the cases the case of the violence and the case how the the students are suffering because of cyber bullying. I will tell you three points why why we think that we should prosecute it. First point, because internet is represent, uh, is personal. Social networks are personal represent, uh, representation of the students. Second, it's because the cyber bullying is the, practically the same like real bullying. And the third, because we think that every type of uh, bullying, every type of violence which result with suicide should be should be uh, prosecuted. About first point, you, internet. No, thank you. Internet uh, represent the internet represent the uh, or social networks represent the the students' real life. We know now that most of the students spend a lot of time by social networks. They create their profiles. Yes, sir. They create their no, thank you. They create their profile. They create their personal. Uh, representation on the social networks, on the Facebook page, on the Twitter page, and all uh, social networks. They simply make uh, public on their, themselves. They try to 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 represent themselves in the in the best way. They create their uh, second personality on the internet. Yes, please. Would you punish? Would you punish the parents of children? Or parents who treat their children miserably and thus the children commit suicide also with the charge of manslaughter? No, if this not uh, uh, result with suicide. And I will continue. The students create their their personality on the internet. That they that mean that they if they have the personality on the internet in, the, in some of the society, in their society, uh, when we are speaking about the children who are in the primary school and in the secondary school, this is uh, what they are. They represent themselves, they uh, put themselves in the public so they can uh, social uh, with, another, uh, with another pupils, with another students, how they can develop themselves and they can con contact. The se second point uh, is about how the cyber bullying is the same like real bullying. If you are create your personality, if you are put, no, thank you, if you are put yourself on the internet and uh, you try to represent yourself in the best way and you have someone who is uh, injuring you on the internet, who is uh, threatening you, who are bullying you on the internet, I think that this is the same like in the real life because it's the, you have the same oppression, oppression, no, thank you, you have the same oppression from another side who is pushing you to, to something what you don't want. This is, this is about the internet. You try to, to represent yourself. You, you have right to your uh, personality. You have right to you express your opinion, to you express your difference. No, thank you. To you express your difference on the internet. If you are, have the oppression from another side and the pers person are bullying you, I think this is the same like in real life. There, no, thank you. This is the same like in the real life. In the real life, we have the cases where a lot of people who have different styles, same like in the internet, who have different way of behavior, same like in the, on the internet or social networks, no, thank you, who have the different behavior, they, they being bullied from the, from the, uh, the people who are don't think the same. The same things are happening in the internet. About the, the third point, uh, every type of every type of uh, bullying every type of uh, of pressuring every type of violence which is result with suicide we think that it should be pro uh, prosecuted no thank you we, we think that it should be prosecuted because we have here the the side which is uh, which is making the harm for the people 
which is making the harm. If this is simple thing, if you are simple in the in the in the Facebook and somebody is threatening you all the day, somebody is sending you unpleasant message. No, thank you. S sending you unpleasant message which impact on you, which impact on on your. Uh, health, which impact on your school, which is impact on your studying. We think that somebody should stop this. And no, some, some, no, thank you. Somebody should stop this, and somebody uh, should should regulate this. For this should uh, should be uh, should be punishment. In the case of suicide, this is the extreme which is, can happen, and this is something what uh, what is happening. We we are. We are uh, we, uh, we can see that it's happening this uh, in the, a lot of the cases. It's finished with suicide. It's finished with uh, with person who are being uh, mentally destroyed by by bullying on the internet, by publishing their personal images, by pu uh, publishing their private videos. Yes. Are you saying because of bullying on the internet, people go to suicide themselves, not because of other problems in real life? One one of the cause one of the cause can be the the in the this in this period when the children are in the age between twelve and fifteen this is the most sensitive period for them they are very emotional and every every type of the bullying every type of the of the pressure or behavior yes if the minimum charge is manslaughter what would the maximum charge be thank you if in this period. In this, this period, when they are really sensitive, uh, every every type of, of uh, bullying, every type of negative uh, attitude to them can impact with very uh, very big harms. And because of that, we think that uh, that uh, internet bullying, cyber bullying, should be punishment. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'll start my speech. Okay, first, I want to represent our arguments and then I refute uh, the opening of the government side. Okay, first, we have a three, uh, sorry, two arguments in this debate uh, against this motion. Uh, first argument is uniqueness of internet and the second argument is social norms are different from one country to another. Okay, okay, I first, I explain about first argument, uh, uniqueness of internet. Uh, the opening government says that uh, cyberbullying is like real. Uh, sorry, this argument is refuted too. Please confirm this point. And um, opening government says that cyberbullying is like real bullying, but um, cyber world and real world is completely different. And I explain that point. Um, for example, uh, cyber world is uh, has no border. First. Cyber world has no border, so uh, we can uh, we can uh, talk with another country's people easily than real world. Please come for this point. And also, uh, <clears throat> also we cannot uh, on the real world. Uh, I'm sorry, on the uh, cyber world, uh, we can only chat. Uh, the tool of communication is only chat, so we cannot. No, thank you. We cannot know what uh, the uh, the internet user intend to tell us, or what kind of thing, what uh, tone uh, in the real world we can know what the other person intended to talk with us, because uh, we can uh, understand them by tones or uh, the voice uh, voice uh, value and like that. But in the uh, in the cyber world, we cannot distinguish that things be because uh, there is only letter. The tool of communication is only letter or like that. So we cannot know uh, what kind of things the in uh, other internet user want to tell us. Good sir. Yeah, yeah. If a person tells me online that I'm scum and 
less than a human being, how can that be misinterpreted? Sorry, pardon? If another person tells me online that I'm less of a human being and that I suck, how that can be misinterpreted? Yeah, but um, the actually, but uh, the on, um, for example, on the uh, if you play the game, uh, online game like that, uh, uh, you uh, you can only communicate with other players with chatting. This is this is a part. So um, <coughs> so uh, in this case, so uh, if you uh, do not intend to bully other persons, uh, in some cases uh, you will you actually uh, bully other persons. Please, uh, please confirm this point. And okay, next about argument two is the. Uh, social norms are different from one, culture, uh, one country to another. Uh, I think it is natural to think uh, this point because uh, actually, uh, for example, uh, the uh, Holocaust is uh, prohibited in Germany, but uh, in other countries it is not prohibited. And we cannot, uh, some internet users don't know these things uh, like that and cultural differences. Uh, some, uh, many, pre uh, many internet users don't know the, this point. And uh, they do not uh, intentionally bring others, uh, if they do not want to intentionally uh, bully other, uh, other internet users, uh, but in some cases, uh, when you, uh, while you are talking with, no thank you, while you are talking uh, with another person uh, on the internet, and sometimes you real, uh, actually blame or bully that person. Uh, and this is not intention, intentional action, but uh, sometimes actually your action beca uh, is become uh, the bullying. Please come from this point. Before you use it. Okay. In which culture does you're a pig, you should kill yourself a good thing? Sorry? In, in which culture is you're a pig, you should kill yourself a good thing? No, 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 no. We don't talk such thing. And we, we want to say is, uh, how to say? Um, at, for example, uh, I live in Japan and I live in a Jap uh, I obey the Japanese social norms. And uh, if we uh, talk with uh, like America's people, America's uh, internet user, and uh, <clears throat> in that case, I don't know America's social norms. And uh, in some cases, I uh, commit the. Or I inf infringe that America's people's uh, social norms. In that case, uh, America's internet, America's internet users uh, feel bad because their social norms were committed by uh, are committed by me. But I don't, I do not intend that. And America's person may uh, committed the sorry. crime. Sorry, sorry, no, thank you. Okay, and next I refute the argument, uh, go op open government side. Uh, first, three. Uh, firstly, their argument three, I think they talk about the Facebook and like that, but uh, we can ignore the person who blame or who bully us uh, by pushing the button, uh, pushing the button which ignore the, that person. And so we can solve this problem easily now, please confirm this point. And also, no thank you. And also about their argument one, <clears throat> and it is, uh, firstly, it is out of case of the motion, please go from this point. Okay, and next about uh, argument two, uh, they say that cyberbullying is like real bullying, but as I said, it is complete, there is a complete difference be uh, between the real world and cyber world. Uh, so uh, it is not the uh, it is not the same bullying. Please come from this point. In some cases, uh, when if you do not want to bully other person, but that your action on the internet world becomes uh, um, regarded as bullying by other persons, other internet users. Please come from this point. Thank you. So we'll now go back to the opening government and we'll call on the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, that is 
Dear ladies and gentlemen, this house would prosecute cyber bullying that results in the victims committing suicide with a minimum of charge of manslaughter. I would like to thank you uh, for the leader of the opposition for his wonderful speech, but uh, I have to disagree with some point of expressed by him. And I will start with rebuting. So uh, you said, sir, that uh, internet world is totally different than the real world, right? So uh, this is like we have human rights on the real world, but on the internet world, we have no rights. I don't agree with that. Another thing you said uh, relating to this difference between the real world and the cyber world, and you mentioned that uh, we can have differences in, in different countries re related to the regulation of the internet. Well, my idea is that uh, uh, on the internet world, you can face even more bullying. So you can face bullying even from other countries and other people, not only your colleagues and the people that know you in the real world. <clears throat> so I would like then to, to strengthen the arguments of the Prime Minister. And my idea is that we should think about the development of our children. Okay. Please. What alternatives have been tried in regards to cyberbullying, and why are you jumping across to a very harsh, uh, harsh stance as calling them manslaughter? Well, uh, that's a good point, but uh, there have been cases of suicidal, so they have taken the bullying to a different level. So we have to take the punishment to a higher level, and we have to think about the, the lives of our children. I mean, uh, how would we make them develop properly? So our children should develop not only physical, intellectual, but also emotional. And uh, we are not talk talking here only about the case when they commit suicide, but even if you are a children and you face bullying on the internet, you may not suicide, but this will, will uh, have a strong, very strong, uh, it will affect very strongly your development in the next years and the way you will become as a person. Please. Is cyberbullying the only cause for a person to commit suicide? Of course, it's not the only cause, but it's one of the main causes that can cause suicide, especially in the case of children. Nowadays, children are more, are using internet more and more. They, they are using a lot of time on the internet and, and socializing or, I don't know, searching for, for homework uh, results or so on. And they use the internet more and more. So bullying on the internet may, may take them to suicide. So even if suicide is not the, it's not only committed uh, because of the causes of internet. <clears throat> So we think that uh, if, we, if we protect our children for, from uh, cyberbullying, they should, please. So if you said cyberbullying isn't the main cause, or at least not the only cause, is it fair for the bullies to take up on the responsibility of other factors that have might, might have made the impact and made the person commit suicide? I think uh, uh, it's fair to to take the burden for them because they uh, they are threatening those facts that take the children to, co to commit suicide. <clears throat> so as I said, uh, to protect our children from cyberbullying, in this way, they will feel more safe, not even on the internet, but also in their schools. And this will have a strong effect and will increase the out outcomes of the students.
and one children or person has the, the right to express themselves on the internet, even though they are different, uh, even though this might be uh, an incentive for the bully, bullies to attack them, they have the right to express their identity the same way in the real world and in the internet world. So thank you very much. So, hello, dear judges, my opponents, my colleagues. Um, so, today's motion is uh, means that uh, this house would pros uh, prosecute cyber uh, cyber bullying, which leads to suicide, like non intentionally So, what we want to say about it? Uh, let me firstly clarify the our case, and after that, refute uh, the things what what saying about our proposition team. What we want to say about uh, we have different social norms. What I want to talk about it, um, let me clarify you for by an example. For example, in Ethiopia, in Africa, this sign means uh, I hate you. But for my country, it's good, good. So I'm, in, I'm not intellectually show this side, for example, for some people of uh, Ethiopia, he, so he thinks that I hate him. So, but I'm not uh, even want to, to do it. I, I want to... Caesars, for example, is a great job. So we see that there is some different social norms of other countries. So internet connects all countries and there is different social norms. What we want to say to you, dear judges, uh, so uh, about uniqueness of uh, internet, uh, we want to say that internet is uh, kind of different of real life. We want to say that uh, what say actually proposition team was? He said that you can face even more bullying in internet. Uh, but we want to say that the motion says that we uh, that the motion says that the people who uh, bullying somebody he don't even think that he is bullying somebody. So we want to say that the proposition team uh, started to say that uh, these people uh, with a purpose started to bully somebody. So. Uh, but the motion says in different ways. For example, if I don't want to bully somebody, but I'm 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 did it in like not individually. So uh, of course I'm like don't want to do it. So what you want to say to you, dear judges? It's it shouldn't be prosecuted. Uh, no, thank you. Um, what about a proposition side set? They said. Uh, that, that, please. No, please. So what they say, they said about, we should care about our children, we should care, but no, thank you, please, let me, come, let me continue. We should care about our children. Yes, we agree, we should care about our children, but let me uh, clarify you the situation. For example, is a, is a scale of, for example, the problems. There is a girlfriend problems, family problems, for example, school problems, and internet is only one of the pieces of the, of the top of the suicide. So we have to say that we should solve these problems, these all problems about girlfriend, family, and stuff like that. If we care about children, we should solve these problems firstly, not even internet. Internet is the last point we should, we should solve. You want to say for example, okay. So if I'm a parent, I should control my children to con to control how many how, how much time he should he should like be in internet. So we we want to care about our children, of course we understand it. So we want to say that we should care about children and solve these problems. Not only internet, we should solve these problems, all these problems. Firstly, for example, like as about for example mental problems and stuff like that. So we want to solve this problem firstly. So. Uh, okay. How would showing this sign to a certain person kill him? But how can the cultural different different cultural norms? Uh, actually, for example, for my culture, said some 
Okay, let's imagine, for example, for my culture, saying somebody is normal, for example, I say some things, it's normal for us, for my culture, but for somebody in another, in other, par another part of the world, it's like very aggressive, very no normal. So, for example, he, he understand me a different way. So what you want to say is that there is other social norms. Um, <clears throat> what's actually the proposition team actually want to say? This is about every every type of bullying leads to suicide. And for example, every, it's every every day somebody bull you, bull you, bull you on Facebook. So we want to say that, okay, it's bull, but we want to say that we can ignore this person. There is different buttons. Where can we ignore this person? Where can we close? Where can we just delete this person? Uh, of our friends, we can just uh, close the private. Cl we can just make our account private, not to, to order, not to be bullied by somebody if it's uh, your problem, for example. And what about actually the first argument of our proposition? Like internet represents ourselves. Uh, okay, we agree that the internet represents ourselves, but what the it's it's don't prove the the, the point that we should prosecute the <clears throat> cyber bullying. We want to say that uh, our proposition didn't uh, didn't uh, didn't prove the link, didn't didn't show the link between this argument and the motion. They said that internet represents ourselves, that uh, it's we teenagers make this public and the create second personality in internet, so what? So we see that there is no link between motion and the first argument. What about their second argument? It's like real bullying is the same as cyber bullying. So we want to say that no, if somebody pressure you, how I said before, we can actually close this chat or go away from the different sites. So I want to say if you didn't close this uh, chat, so you want to argue with him. So we see that this is a problem not of internet, not of your, not as, not of your personality in internet. It's a problem of the person who are bullying, who are okay. Uh, there is like consequences where can you avoid this where can you fight you can fight but you cannot fight in the internet for example like that so it's it's a bad consequences but anyway you can avoid this so uh, let me uh, sum up the case of proposition team it's like first argument the internet represents ourselves it's uh, don't show a link between motion and this uh, argument. The real bullying is the same as cyber bullying. I want to say that no, the real bullying is a, is a completely different for some points I mentioned before. The second argument is like every type of bullying leads to suicide. In the example of Facebook, we want to say that example of Facebook is not workable because we can ignore it or close some chats with such people. What, uh, and let me clarify our uh, Case is like uniqueness of internet. There is some social, uh, there is other social norms, and we should solve other problems in, in order to avoid the suicide. Of we should care about kids. How said our proposition team? So we make this plan workable. We want to solve uh, these problems. Firstly, not only like cyberbullying. So thank you very much. Second, yeah, your stopper is here. Um, I'm sorry, every time the same problem. We on the side of the proposition believe in justice and we leave in justice for the victims and their families. And we also want to make the world understand that cyberbullying is actually a bigger problem than anybody believes that it is. In order to prove that, I will first bring you three points of rebuttal to, the, to what was said on the side of the opposition, and then I'm going to bring our, our own two arguments. First of all, I'm going to talk about what kind of a message this sort of a uh, thing sends, and secondly, I'm going to talk about retrib retribution to the vic victim's family. Now moving on to the rebuttal. The first thing that was said on the side of the proposition, and they talked about throughout their two speeches, were the cultural and social differences between different countries. They never explained to us how the 
these differences are actually going to lead to suicide. We think that these different social norms or different understandings of, of I don't know, how you read a word or how you use a hand gesture are not going to make somebody kill themselves. Because if you use this sort of, a, if you talk to someone and they misinterpret you, this is not even classified as bullying. This, just, this was just an accidental thing that happened and nobody's going to kill themselves because of that. We are talking about people who have an intent to harm, who have an intent to bully someone for the sake of bullying. And this, we think that when that intent leads to somebody killing themselves, we should and have to punish those people. Now moving on to the second point of rebuttal. They talked about other problems we need to solve, such as uh, bullying at school, such as, I don't know, people having problems with their girlfriends. Yes, we're working on it just as well. Now, they also uh, said, uh, yes. So if there are other factors, how is it fair for the cyberbully to take upon the responsibility of those factors and be charged with the crimes that the factors have actually caused? No, these factors are lead to suicides in other cases. But if we're talking about, for example, Amanda Todd, then she said that the reason she she wanted to kill herself was because of cyberbullying. If we can prove that cyberbullying was the reason, we have the absolute obligation to put these people uh, to punish these people. Now, the third thing that they said that we can't that we can very much ignore that person who is bullying us and, uh, I don't know, turn off the chat, chat or whatever. The thing is, that is actually not that easy. Uh, Cyberbullying is not just texting. You can close that. You can unfriend them on Facebook. But in many cases, that will not be enough. I will bring the, uh, ex the same thing happened with actually Amanda Todd. She did delete that guy. She did get rid of him. But he still found her. He still distributed images of her on Facebook through, through fake accounts, through other other accounts and sometimes the deleting works and no thank you if the deleting works then the person is not going to commit suicide but if it doesn't then that bullying is still going to continue and that bull is bullying is still going to be just as detrimental and we think that because there are other methods to bully people except for text messaging that ignoring sometimes doesn't work and if it doesn't work we still need to punish that person yes why isn't manslaughter a charge for bullying in real life why is it? Why isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's just as, my, it's just as well might, might be, but we think that this is not really in this motion right now. But moving on to our own points. First of all, we want to talk to you about sending the message. We think that right now people don't consider cyberbullying to be a real actual issue, right? Because like there is usually no sympathy for the victim. As we saw with Amanda Todd, after she killed herself, the, the thing happened that people turned against her and they actually, you know, ridiculed her for being the victim and for falling into tra that trap of actually being able to be bullied. She was, you know, people uh, talked bad about her because she didn't delete the guy on Facebook because she didn't delete herself from Facebook. The problem is that she did do all that and he still found her and he still came back, which means that we're actually ridiculing those victims for being victims and we think that this is a problem because this shows that people don't actually understand the psychological damage cyberbullying uh, does to people. People think that, oh, this is just on the internet, you should ignore that, this is nothing, Im this is nothing important, and if you actually be are affected by that, then you're a loser and this is your fault. And this is a problem because people don't understand that cyberbullying is actually just as detrimental as any other bullying uh, and can lead to even worse consequences. And if we implement this law, we're actually sending a very clear message message that this is an issue no thank you and this issue is just as important as any bullying and the psychological damage that comes from cyberbullying can actually lead to suicide and is actually that important and that big that we need to punish them and if we say that clearly that this can actually lead to suicide and this is actually a pro problem that we are punishing you for because the effects you have on people is that detrimental that it is actually actually punishable then it also will serve as a deterrent for future bull bullies because they will be obligated to think twice before they actually want to do anything because they know that they can get punished and they also know that because they get punished maybe that what I'm saying to somebody actually can damage them and actually can destroy their entire life and we think that it will help uh, prevent bullying it will also help prevent bullies to bully bully further after uh -huh. they realize no thank you that
that their bullying has an effect. And now moving on to our second argument about retribution to the victim's family. We think that in many cases, we're usually talking about kids in most cases, right? So we think that when somebody's family, family's kids die and uh, the family quite uh, obviously wants justice for that kid, they want to know that the person who is responsible for that kid's death is punished. And in many cases, no thank you, these people are not punished or not punished uh, enough for the family to actually feel that there has been justice done for their kids. And we think that the feeling of justice the family gets when they know that their uh, kid's killer is being, is being punished and is being detained is actually the only way these families can mourn these kids properly and is the only way these families can actually ever get closure. Because if they know that that bully is still on the run, that a bully can still bully other people, they will never be actually able to get over the fact that their kid just died. And what this means leads to is that if these families don't know that their bullies are caught, this will lead to, for example, vigilante justice, which is what happened with Amanda Todd again. After her bully was not caught or punished, there was a manhunt on him because everybody wanted to catch him. And we think that in order for these families to not go into that, in order for these families to actually know that there is justice done for their kids, we need to punish these bullies. And also, we need to punish them for the, second, for the first reason that we brought out earlier, in order to send the message that cyberbullying is a problem and needs to be dealt with. And because of all of these reasons, I would beg to propose. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Um, before we go on, just, just a quick point. It's, it's the base in your voices. It's if you speak deep, that, that, that's what causes the problem. It's not really the volume. So just make sure that you do it. It's very strong. That way, you can be a little bit louder, but it doesn't affect us as much. So just keep the base. Just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, you are scum and less than a human being. In their world, ladies and gentlemen, that is a sentence that is going to be enough especially if one part, the victim, decides for it to be enough, to put you in jail, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to be arguing in two ways. I'm going to structure my speech based on what the justice system is there for. So in the first part of my speech, I'm going to talk about, and this is going to include the rebuttal to their case, about how justice is there for deterrence and how this is not going to deter. And even if it is, we don't want deterrence to become into revenge. And the second part, which is going to be my extension, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk about the core tenet of justice, which is justice and fairness itself, and appropriate punishment for people uh, who have committed some sort of crimes. So in no ways, ladies and gentlemen, are we justifying bullies in the real world, and in no ways are we justifying bullies in the cyber world. However, what we are doing, ladies and gentlemen, is we think that unproportionate justice and unproportionate deterrence is something that is way out of bounds, and it's something that escapes the definition of justice, something we cannot allow. And therefore, we're going to be defending, uh, we're going to be defending uh, something, uh, either the status quo or some alternatives that they, uh, and we asked them the BOIs cho chose not to explore. So, ladies and gentlemen, on the first issue about uh, sort of uh, about deterrence, and they had several points about deterrence as well. So, first of all, um, it's just as important as any sort of bullying. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, real bullying, way more obvious, way more physical in most circumstances, is not punished in any sort of way that they have described, ladies and gentlemen. And they fail to give us an explanation why. They just said it's not part of the motion. So we see that if something that is even more physical than cyber, cyber uh, bullying, something more direct, something more intentional, being and kids are being fined for that, their parents are being fined for that, or they're being maybe confined by the law, yet not called manslaughters, we don't necessarily see how it should extend to cyberbullying, something that is less direct, something that is less intentional, and something that is very subjective due to human psychology, ladies and gentlemen, as opposed to as opposed to um, as opposed to real bullying. So we don't necessarily see how it's going to deter people here. So the second thing is that they said it's going to make pe uh, people think twice, and that's going to be the turn, and that's basically as far as it went. So several uh, several points on that. So first of all. 
But by you saying that you want people to think twice, that means your main objective is to stop these crimes, which is perfectly reasonable. However, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at the real world and let's look at what's going on now. First of all, however sad the suicides might be that uh, supposedly are caused by cyberbullying, we see that there are very few instances of cyberbullying that has actually caused suicides. So in the bigger picture, you're not necessarily going to be reducing cyberbullying that much. The second thing, ladies and gentlemen, if, even if that weren't true, you're going to be targeting children because both teams and both houses agreed that it usually pertains to children, that children are the people that are doing, at least teenagers, uh, are the people that are doing the cyberbullying. They're not going to be the people who are going to think twice, ladies and gentlemen, because they don't necessarily understand the consequences of their actions. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we always punish them a little bit less than adults, and you want to call them manslaughters from a, uh, from a secondary school age just because they have not necessarily thought about what their actions uh, might have been because their target was not to kill the person, ladies and gentlemen. But even if that weren't true, they still have failed to explore the alternatives, ladies and gentlemen. We believe that for cyberbullying to stop, it is perfectly fine to maybe confine a person in jail, which would be the harshest uh, extent that we go to, for a year, not label them as manslaughters, something that is going to be following them for the rest of their lives. It is perfectly enough to find people something that is not uh, being fully executed in the status quo for doing this, ladies and gentlemen, because we see that cyberbullying is sort of a pleasure that people can easily give up if you give them a, a, a simple incentive not to do that. However, you have never explained to us why you're making this huge leap in punishment of labeling them as manslaughter or something near as murder. Secondly, you have not explained to us why this is the minimum and what to what extent you are going to go if people are cyberbullying. And lastly, you talked about retribution, how kids die and families want uh, families want justice. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's not confuse justice with revenge because we don't necessarily see that a person has indirectly caused another person to, uh, to suicidal thoughts or to commit suicide is necessarily uh, is necessarily the person that is completely at fault for it. So we don't necessarily see how families have the right to seek for revenge in a moment in this case, especially since we're talking about children, ladies and gentlemen, who you want to exact this family revenge on. Yes? Uh, can courts decide whether this was the exact cause that uh, causes suicide and um, not every cause will be... No, no, and I'm going to explain that in our material which comes now. So this is, ladies and gentlemen, our extension is going to be how it's out of bounds of the main core tenets of justice, which is fairness, ladies and gentlemen. So, ladies and gentlemen, how is it out of bounds? We see that this punishment is going to be completely unfair. And this is unfair on two points. So first of all, it's completely disproportionate. You do not cut the hands of a thief that stole it to prevent it, him from stealing it again. We see it's disproportionate on several levels, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, because we see that the victim plays a huge role in the person that is cyberbullying. However, when you run somebody over with a car, whether you're drunk or whether, whether it was intentional, it is completely on to you, ladies and gentlemen. However, in, in a cyberbullying instance, when you say something that you never actually wanted the person to kill themselves for saying that, you give the person some sort of right to, uh, and then the person kills himself, we see it's not necessarily fully the fault of that person person that has committed cyberbullying. Second point, ladies and gentlemen, why it's disproportionate is human psychology, ladies and gentlemen. We see that human psychology is not something that's normative. However, law is because we want to be as fair as possible. So there could be a girl that first of all broke up with her boyfriend, second of all has some tensions in her family because her parents might not necessarily think that she lifts up to the ideal that, she, uh, that they want her to be. And then there is an instance of cyberbullying. And when she kills herself, you're only punishing the cyber bully because you don't trace it back to where it actually happens. So what we have in the status, what we have in your wall, ladies and gentlemen, is that the cyber bully takes up, up the responsibility of the parents who are putting her on due stress. You, he puts up their, on, on the responsibility of the circumstances that, that have arisen, that have arisen and have maybe pushed her in a very depressive state or maybe very psychologically unstable uh, state. So for all these reasons, we believe it's very out of bounds with the judicial system. It's not going to deter, it's not going to do justice.
<clears throat> okay, so what happened on the first table was actually uh, government one, uh, first government spoke about how offline is different. It's the same thing as online. Uh, that's what I'll elaborate, elaborate a bit more later. And what was spoken actually about from the first opposition is that, that sometimes there is no intent. So what we will speak, what side uh, government will actually say in this, uh, for this is that people, that the, these, uh, as was mentioned by uh, Simonos uh, here, is that these cases rarely happen. So extreme bullying is what we're talking about. It's not that we will show this sign, the OK sign to some kid in Africa and he will kill himself. We have to give him extreme mental torture, extreme torture uh, in the world so he can kill himself. So what, this is what we will speak about, uh, that's what I will speak about here in my speech. So how is the offline world equal to the online world? As was mentioned by our prime minister, kids these days spend a lot, a lot of time in their online world. So a single picture of them naked online can destroy a person's life. As was mentioned by my previous speaker, Amanda Tart killed herself because uh, her bully, no thank you, her bully uh, actually posted naked pictures of her. And in her video, in her confession video, before she killed herself, she actually explicitly told the only reason she killed herself was because those pictures of her naked went online. Why? No thank you. We're not saying, what was argued by the, the, the uh, opposition is that the victim also played, played a role, uh, role in this. Yes, we agree that Amanda Tart actually showed and maybe sent those naked pictures uh, to, um, to her bully. Uh, but it's not only her fault, it's social pressure. He might have trusted that person and the first person actually later on uh, bullied her and destroyed her life. So it's the same as in pedophilia. The victim plays a role. You first talk to your pedo pedophile and then you go out on the street and then he rapes you or uh, you have, as a child, have sex with that person. That's the same with uh, this, um, with this cyberbullying. You trust the person, you actually give your personal information, you give your private pictures and you allow this person to get into your life and then later on destroy it by telling everyone, telling the world, showing the world how you're maybe not a good person or uh, giving you, uh, no thank you, or showing your naked pictures. So let's Let's see what happened on the second table. The, uh, the, the opposition actually say that little is enough for a person to be put in jail. No. As they say that extreme measure, extreme bullying should take place in order to, for a person to, to kill himself. So what we are trying to prove here, what we are saying is that these cases will be looked by, by courts, by multiple people that will see, that will actually see whether the bullying was the exact cause of people killing themselves. So if this is not the case, the person will not be prosecuted with manslaughter or the uh, higher uh, punishments. So if the person that was by spoken by the, uh, by the entire government, if the pe person has other problems, if the witnesses say that they killed themselves because of different reasons, we will let the bully free because saying uh, you're a pig, you're a lesser of the human being will not cause the person to kill himself. If we see that a person was tortured by a certain other individual for months and months before, and if we see that he posted naked pictures of her, said bad things about her everywhere on, online, and destroyed her life, and that when the first person killed him, themselves later on, we will punish this person with manslaughter. Uh, oh, later they say that they argue that real bullying is not punished. Let's punish real bullying, ladies and gentlemen. In this world, the real bullying is punished by some lesser uh, punishments, but we agree uh, side government will also, will, will also like to punish real bullying if the opposition wants to. It's the same argumentation. Uh, bullies uh, argue, bullies uh, torture other people, other people kill themselves. We think that the bullies are responsible for uh, the deaths of them. And that's why it's manslaughter. It's not first degree murder, it's manslaughter because it's an unintentional uh, murder. Uh, later on, uh, they say that children are going to be called manslaughters because they target our children. No, ladies and gentlemen, usually children online and bullies in the real world target children. Adult bullies target children. It's not that children target children all the time. And when an adult targets a ch child, we will call him a manslaughter. If a child targets a child, and if it's uh, bad enough, we agree, we will also call this person a manslaughter. And we agree that the punishment should be lower, and that's why we have juvenile homes and non-prisons, and then we have other things. Yes? Uh, for example, uh, is a man have a car, have a career, have a job, have a good life, oh, yeah? and somebody trying to cover bullying him in the internet, will he go to commit suicide? He might. He might. If it's torturing enough, if he's not smart enough, if he has mental problems, he might commit suicide, and that might be the triggering battle. It's the same, it's the same if you run over with him a uh, black heart. It's the same thing. You uh, unintentionally kill a certain person. Now let's speak about three points. Whose fault is it, and in which situation this happens? 
it's the bully's fault. In government's case, it's the bully's court, a, a fault. As we explained, these cases will go to court. These cases will go to an institution that will later on decide whether that bully was the cause of the murder, was the cause of the suicide. And if it's so, if it's, if in the only case, if that's so, we will punish the, uh, the murderer with manslaughter or some other uh, harsher punishment. And uh, the, these people have the intent to harm, which was also argued by my previous speaker. These people go out there and torture certain individuals for months by bullying them online and sometimes even offline. It's not only chat, it's posting private information, it's posting uh, private pictures of that person. It's not only chatting about how bad they are, it's destroying their life in the public sphere. Later on, the government's message, the government's message that we, we as the government want to send a message that the bullying is harmful. We want to send a message that the bullying is a really, really bad thing that we have in this world because kids, as I explained, are vulnerable. Kids spend a lot of time in, on the internet, kids spend a lot of time uh, in their offline world when they might be bullied. And we do not want that as was spoken by our first government. We want our children, we want the most vulnerable group of society to be protected by those maybe sometimes even mentally retarded people that bully some people. So. What we're, uh, what we're trying to say is that people there will be deterred. People will be deterred by this harsher punishment of not, uh, I mean, of, the, of manslaughter or other punishments. So if a person knows that he'll go to jail for maybe three or four years, if he bullies a certain person and that person kills himself, of course, it's the psychology of the human beings to not actually go and uh, bully that certain individual. And the third and last point that I will speak about is justice. We, as a government, being, bring justice to the kids. We, as a government, bring justice to the family. Those individuals that bully people are the final push. Are, sometimes are the entire push, but usually at the final push. So what's, what's happening here is individuals push other individuals to kill themselves. It might not be intentional in all cases. It should be intentional in most of the cases because these tortures usually take months. So, because they intentionally try to harm a certain person, and sometimes this harm leads to uh, a killing. Because we want to bring justice to the families, and because we, as a government, as a governmental institution, we want to protect our people and send a clear message that we want to protect our children, we beg you to vote government. Thank you. The most important question within this debate is whether this punishment is fair or not. And within this discussion, I will talk to you about the three points that the opposition proposition brought to you. Number one, whether this unfair punishment sends a clear message. Number two, whether it deters crime. And number three, whether it leads to retribution. So what was our case? What did we say from the get-go? That the criminal justice system, ladies and gentlemen, needs to take into account fairness before any other thing. Even if it leads sends a message, even if it leads to retribution, even if it leads to send, it, even if it leads to detentions as well. But the importance is, ladies and gentlemen, that at times the criminal justice system realizes that it does not need to go too far. The reason why, ladies and gentlemen, we don't stone people to death despite it sending a clear message. The reason why, ladies and gentlemen, we don't cut the hands of thieves even if it leads to detents or sends a clear message to society is this. That the criminal justice system, ladies and gentlemen, needs to take into account that fairness is the most important principle. And here is where this was a problem within the proposition that they never ever dealt with this. They never ever, ladies and gentlemen, told you why this is akin to manslaughter. And this is a very problem, ladies and gentlemen, that the proposition of today had, and I will tell you why this exists. Because we from the get-go said that you have to realize that cyberbullying, ladies and gentlemen, is not the only cause of suicide. And here is how we went on and established this. That a girl might have problems in her relationship with her boyfriend who might be treating her not the way he wants not the way she wants her to. Probably, ladies and gentlemen, her parents might also ridicule her at home. 
And then, ladies and gentlemen, cyberbully might also be a contributor to this entire problem. But the idea is, ladies and gentlemen, there are these, all of these things are a holistic. It is not only one cause, ladies and gentlemen, but a holistic cause that you need to take into account. Sir. But what will the proposition do? It will only and only punish the cyber bully. And we told you, ladies and gentlemen, that this is highly unfair. We told you, ladies and gentlemen, that if there are other causes of this death, why don't you take them into account? Why are you only punishing the cyber bully, oh, ladies and gentlemen? Sir. Why are you only sending sir. a 13 year old kid to prison for 25 years? and make, making him suffer, ladies and gentlemen, making him the only person to suffer is a question that the proposition of today never answered within this debate and took this question for granted alone. And having established, ladies and gentlemen, how it is unfair to only punish the cyber bully, let's look at another reason why this is unfair. Because you understand, ladies and gentlemen, that the criminal justice system needs to be normative. Because you understand that when I drive at 120 kilometers an hour and I crash into a person, I will kill that person. But is that true in the case of cyberbullying all the time? It is not. And here is where our case became all the more important. Because the criminal justice system, ladies and gentlemen, needs to take into account a definite outcome. Does cyberbullying have a definite outcome? No, it does not. And here is where their examples go right out of the drain. Because they themselves said that a person might be offended, offended if you call him less than a human being. Well, there are other instances, ladies and gentlemen, in which a person might not be offended by you calling him less than a human being. What about those instances, ladies and gentlemen? Isn't cyberbullying so bad in that circ those circumstances as well? And here is where it becomes more problematic. Because you understand that in this case, suicide is something that is left up to the person's will. It is not the only the fault of that person, ladies and gentlemen. He has not caused that direct harm. But I choose to commit suicide, ladies and gentlemen. I choose to kill myself just because that person did one thing. But in the case of an accident, ladies and gentlemen, I do not choose to kill myself. That choice is something, ladies and gentlemen, that is not prevalent when there is manslaughter in other cases. And this is the distinction, ladies and gentlemen, that we drew from the get point, go. A distinction that was never ever tackled by the team proposition. Point, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, if I drive a car with 10 kilometers per hour, if I crash into a person, I won't kill him. And it's not manslaughter. And if I bully a certain person and he doesn't kill himself, it's not manslaughter in the government's case, just to make it clear. Thank you. No, sir, but you have to understand that it is so left to the other person's sentiment to human psychology that this becomes all the more unfair. Because I might be a person who is very, very sensitive and another person is not. Just because, ladies and gentlemen, I am so, so sensitive, the government will punish another person for just calling me less than a human being. Is that something that is fair, ladies and gentlemen, is a question that is very, very important to answer within this debate. And it is not. Because that person, ladies and gentlemen, is not the only contributor, it is left up to choice. And in the case of manslaughter, it is not left up to the choice, which is the most important distinction that we make. And then, ladies and gentlemen, they said that this will create deterrence. And they themselves said that in most cases, suicide does not happen. Less than, let's say, 5% of the cases, suicide might happen. So for 95% of the cases, ladies and gentlemen, there is no deterrence that exists in their world. So what exactly are they changing when they say that cyberbullying is such a big problem? is a question that we ask them. But more importantly, it is more important than deterrence, ladies and gentlemen, to establish fairness. Even if cutting the hands of a thief is what we said from the get-go, even if cutting the hands of a thief leads to deterrence, you don't go too far because there are other principles that are more important. And ladies and gentlemen, now let's ask, does it send a clear message? Does it really send a clear message to society that cyberbullying is bad? We think that the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, that people are already aware of this. People are already aware that cyberbullying is a problem. But the idea is that the minimum bar for this punishment should not be manslaughter. Because you understand, ladies and gentlemen, that the idea is that even if it sends a clear message, it is still unfair regardless. But more importantly, it will not send a clear message. Because when the criminal justice system, ladies and gentlemen, decides to be so unfair, it will people will often start sympathizing with the victims who are punished unfairly and not the cyber and not the uh, with the person who is put into prison, ladies and gentlemen, unfairly, and not the victims. And here is where their idea of a message does not clearly stand. And then they said that they need to give retribution. Here is where our case became all the more important once again, because we said that there are more important principles, ladies and gentlemen, than just spiteful vengeance. And then they had another contention. They said that, well, the courts are going to evaluate, the courts are going to take everything into account. Understand the problem, that the law only states that cyber bullies are supposed to be punished. 
and if the courts take every factor into account ladies and gentlemen these factors are not going to matter because the legislation only says that the cyber bully is the only person who is going to get punished so we don't see any idea of how you are going to punish that person and here is where and here is where ladies and gentlemen their case becomes more problematic because they never said ladies and gentlemen where they never ever clarified whether it's intentional or unintentional but we said that even in both cases ladies and gentlemen it is left up to the choice of that individual and let's understand one example which will summarize the case of the proposition in indirect harm ladies and gentlemen accessory to murder might lead another person to commit a crime but do you punish accessory to murder with manslaughter you do not because that person is not the only person who has caused this crime there are other factors that you take into account and the criminal justice system needs to be fair needs to take into account that the fact that this is an unfair punishment is not going to reach the ends that the proposition of the bond to reach thank you okay thank you to our speaker uh thank you to all speakers and um, for a fine debate if you'd like to uh cross the floor and shake hands and then go outside don't go too far and um, we'll have a quick yeah um